Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Thor News. Technical difficulties. Low five videos. Day two. Somehow, some way, someone has stripped me of the way of using my favorite awesome editing program, Adobe Premiere. So I'm having to strip it down and make lo fi videos. Because if someone's you know, gonna try and get me to stop making videos. I'm gonna be, keep making videos. You know, that's just the way it goes. So here we go. For better, for worse, we're in this together, baby. All right. And apropos, meaning appropriate, for now, I'm talking about Venus. Because if there's one thing I learned when I got into astronomy as an adult is that all this stuff is really weird. And there are a great many mysteries and giant freaking questions that some people ask and a lot of people don't. And what I'm talking about right now is the fact that some I've been saying, one of my main points at Thor News for a long time is that why don't we pay any attention to Venus? Why is Venus such a mystery? Why is Venus such a secret? Why is everything Mars, 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 Mars? Mars looks the exact same as it did in 1967, asterisk. And what have we learned? Oh, uh, it took us like 50 years to learn they have water. But well, we kind of knew that just by looking at the ice on the poles. Like, you got ice, you got water. That's how it works. It doesn't take a PhD to figure that out. <clears throat> so now, we got Venus. And we ain't got a satellite over there like it. ESA don't have one. We don't have one. Japan. Pan don't have one. Russia don't have one. Everybody's agreed to stay away from Venus. And they say because it's hellish and hard. Which is weird, you know. I mean, if I punch in Venus on Google. And then... Apparently, bathing suits are more popular than the planet. But I guess that's for sales and stuff. So we got... What we're talking about today is we just learned something crazy about the atmosphere of Venus. Now let's go to the horse to get it from the mouth or whatever. The ESA finds a frigid surprise hiding at Venus's poles. Wonderful. I'm going to read the article and I'm going to give my opinion. And that's it. I'll let you decide. <clears throat> and if you don't like that, you know, hopefully you can go find something right now that you'd much rather be doing. Give me a second. I like smoke. All right. Venus may be boiling hot, but its poles are very, very cold. Okay, first of all, Venus's atmosphere is not uniform. It's not all the same all the time. So to say Venus is boiling hot, but it's also very, very cold means it has a very diverse, complex, complicated climate, weather, and atmosphere. Just like Earth. Imagine that. Earth's twin looks just, has climate and weather just like Earth. But a little different, I imagine. Or a lot different. But still. Okay, see, I'm going to be jumping all around because I can't edit it. But I'm saying, one of my main points is this. Is that with all the chemicals that go into an atmosphere, the different chemical makeups can allow for different creation on different planets. <clears throat> At least that's how I see it. So, you could have a planet pretty far away from the sun, but if it has a certain chemical makeup, that weather can still be a lot like Earth. And the living temperatures can still be kind of Earth-like as long as all the ingredients within the atmosphere build to that. You know, a divine architecture scenario. So, I don't know, dude. Like, at this point now in 2016, I'm pretty sure we have life that isn't Earth life within our solar system. I wouldn't be surprised if it comes from Venus. I wouldn't be surprised from Mars, from Jupiter. Like, it could be all over our solar system, man. And they know how crazy we are. And apparently, they have us locked down and we're just trying to not have us 
propagate across the galaxy, I guess. Or they're just, uh, or we're just a slaver planet. Or it's a hologram. Who knows? I'll read the article and scientists can tell me. And over here's my fancy graphics. Like it? Okay. Venus, it's the McDLT of planets. The hot side says hot, and the cool side says cool. All right, what do we got going on? April 20th, 10 a.m. This post has been updated with comments from lead author Indigo Muller Udarg. My name is Indigo Muller Udarg. Prepare to die. Oh, I screwed that up. Thanks to a thick layer of cloud cover trapping in heat, Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system. With temperatures boiling at over 850 degrees Fahrenheit. But a study <clears throat> published last week in Nature Physics. The European Space The European Space Agency found something surprising at the planet's poles. Temperatures more frigid than anywhere on Earth. Well, I'll be dang. Man. You got temperatures more frigid than anywhere on Earth. And that totally works within Thor News' planetary physics. But that alone is going to trip up professional university corporate science for a while. So, let that soak into your noggin, broski and mamski. Venus has places that's Venus has places that are colder than Earth. That's crazy, but it's not. Now here's one of your noggin. If Pluto had places that were hotter than Earth, how many years do you think it would be before they told us? You know what I'm saying? Like this information, I'm pretty sure comes from two years ago or four years ago. Like. Sometimes at best we get a two to eight year delay on the up to date information from our public space agencies. Why? I, don't know, I just guess they figure we can't handle revelations like, oh yeah, by the way, Venus has parts that are much colder than Earth. Like we got satellites now that are as big as a Rubik's Cube. Cube sets, they're scary. But, uh, you know, why don't we have like 20 of them floating around Venus or in the atmosphere? Why don't we have one that's just floating outside of Venus? We can watch the whole planet all the time. You know, like if I ran our space agencies, things would be way different, possibly even better. Man, I miss my editing program. I bet you do too. But hang in there with me. Or don't. Even though ESA lost contact with the Venus Express probe two years ago after it ran out of fuel, the agency is still working through the data it returned. As the first spacecraft to explore our nearest neighborhood neighbor since 1989's Magellan mission. Wow. The probe revealed much about that world. Many of the observations were made through plunging the craft into the atmosphere above the poles. Above the poles. And that's the thing. Okay, that's what I do like about this format. Is I can just talk and talk and talk. And that there's a whole thing about the Van Allen belts. Like People are like, we can't get past the Van Allen belts. Well, I don't know, man. Because the way I understand the Van Allen belts, you can still get out through the top or the bottom. Maybe why Antarctica is so hands off. Um, maybe it's real easy to get out of the top and the bottom. Like you could get out on a Frank Lloyd Wright airplane. I don't even know what that means. It was a good reference though for people who like references. Anyway, um, yeah, remember this thing? The double pole or whatever? And then it took us eight years. It took them eight years to tell us. Anyway, I had a point and I forgot it. So let me keep reading. 
Yeah, so they plunged this satellite into the atmosphere, and then we haven't heard from it since. Where the poles, where the probe encountered an atmosphere thinner than previously modeled. So scientists were wrong about the atmosphere. The scientists were wrong about the temperature. Oh, but they're damn sure correct about the universe being 14.3 billion years old, approximately exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, what good does that do me? And you can't really prove it. Like, people are like, oh, they carbon dated it. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. How many, how many people own carbon daters? Maybe MIT, the Catholic Church, and the Federal Reserve. You know, other than that, they got the only three carbon daters on Earth. All right, be sure to correct me in the comments. Venus was filled with choppy atmospheric gravity waves. Gravity waves. How did they know? They can't detect them. Ripples caused by transfers. Or back then, they couldn't detect them. Ripples caused by transfers of momentum between layers in the atmosphere. Concerning uniformity. Hey, I was just talking about uniformity. That's not uniform, man. You know, planets that has an atmosphere that can have like a un unified atmosphere. Oh, uh, remember this? It's a picture I took of Venus off a of stereo or Soho. And it looked like a bug. I'm like, why would you look like a bug? And then the answer kind of scared me, so I stopped thinking about it. Concerning uniformity. Models are mostly rather smooth, while the reality is much more complex and structured. Reality is much more complex and structured. Reality is much more complex and structured. We could be talking about climate change as well, you know. ESA scientist and lead author Indigo Muller Wodarg of Imperial College London said in an email to astronomy, We found enormous variability in the atmosphere densities that is explained by a combination of local, horizontal, day-night density variations. But above all, by strong periodicities, atmospheric waves. Well, I can't read. These are not captured by models. Let me try that again. We found enormous variability in the atmospheric densities that is explained by a combination of local day-night density variations, but above all, by strong periodicities. Atmospheric waves. These are not captured by models. Okay. So they were wrong, but now they're right. And they're telling us when, two years later? This marks the first time the poles of Venus have been directly studied. Owing to Venus's express circular circumpolar orbit, which also allowed a global view. By crashing the probe through these winds on its final descent, the probe made the first ever in STFU observations of polar climates on Venus. And it's diverse and colder than Earth. Tell us about the cities, Ray. I'd like to hear about the Venus cities. Val 4 represent. Yeah, you heard me. Okay. Stay cool. Balance on Earth. Peace. Come on. We can do it. What was I talking about? All right. Trust me, I miss my editing program more than you do. The Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency has a probe in orbit around Venus called Akatsuki, but it will mostly study the climate closer to planet. It will mostly study the climate closer to the planet's equator, hoping to determine what will cause the runaway greenhouse effect. Oh, okay, so we do have one probe out there. When I said we, I mean Japan. Man, this video must be long. I'm on my second cigarette. I know I should quit, but like, I really do feel like the world is hanging by a thread. So maybe I'll, I'll quit when I feel like there's a little bit of stability in our civilization. Okay. Is that a deal? Sounds great. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Which led to incorrect uniformity modeling of the atmosphere. Wait, let me read that. Wadarg pointed out this in his email that previously 
that previous atmospheric models relied on equatorial data from Pioneer Venus mission, which led to incorrect uniformity modeling of the atmosphere. Oh my God. Oh my God. So is this a giant mistake or is this a giant fib? Ladies and gentlemen, they basically took Venus and its atmospheric modeling at the equator and then apply that to the rest of the planet. It's kind of like saying Earth's climate and atmosphere is the exact same at our equator as it is at the poles. It's pretty idiotic. You know, like that's goofy, insane. Sounds, sounds uneducated as go the laws of physics in our universe. So, yeah. Now that scientists are thinking normally, they're like, holy shit, Venus has poles. And the big surprise for all of us is that uh, it's colder than Earth on its poles. So there you go, man. You would think we would have more missions. NASA is mulling several missions as part of its discovery program, one of which, Veritas, Venus Truth, will map the entire surface of the planet and can tell us more about the geology of the poles. Yeah, Venus is where I want to go. Mula Wadarg added, the, added that there may be some relation between the choppy gravity waves, which are separate phenomena from the much heralded LIGO study, and geologic activity on the ground near the poles, but it would require further investigation to, to determine that. We can make observations from the ground, and these are continuously being done. But the real motivation would be to launch a new spacecraft of Venus over the coming decade, which could explore the polar atmosphere in STFU. Ah, yeah, he's been saying the whole Venus is the original Fight Club that you don't talk about Fight Club. And so, maybe that situation is warming up where we can get a little Venus Veritas, a little Venus Truth. That would be wonderful. I think the world could handle a little truth right now. And then we could have a party. And there could be dancing. And uh, that would be awesome. And everybody would get along. And the future would be bright and wonderful. And smell like roses and cotton candy. Anyway. So this is wonderful. Our international space agencies has, have come a step forward. They admitted they made a major mistake in their uniformity atmospheric modeling. And they said, hey, guess what surprise? Venus's poles is colder than Earth. I wonder what other giant surprises we'll find from Venus. I do, I do, I do. Anyway, God bless. And if you made it this far, you deserve a silver blue star. All right, peace out.